Hello world! It's a phrase common with programmers. Generally, the first piece of code that we tend to write when trying out something new, like a language or a machine or a compiler. Where'd you go next though? I'm trying to learn DOS programming and I want something to get stuck into. But again, I don't want to spend like actual time learning lots of theory that I then can't actually see working. I could make a game, as several of you have suggested, but I'm doing that with my egg on light and I don't want to start two at once. I'll just get confused and not finish either. What I need are sort of short little programs to try out ideas and learn some basic skills. What you're watching right now is my emulated PC and it's booting up and going through its power on tests. This screen is just text based. It's pretty iconic and I figured I'd try and recreate it for fun. This is the story of what I discovered. In this video, we're falling down the rabbit hole of Intel's weird memory modes, DOS interrupts, the PC BIOS, and even how to talk to a VGA controller. All because I was bored and wanted to print some stupid text on the screen. This is the kind of challenge that I want to do. Let's examine the boot screen of a PC for a bit. If you have a PC made in the past 25 years, it won't do this anymore. But if you're around my age, this screen was a daily ritual that you just had to sit through and you'll know it well. Behind the scenes, the PC is running code from the BIOS and it's doing various tasks that we're not really interested in for this video. The end result is a machine that tries to boot its operating system. What we're interested in is the output on the screen and how we could copy it. So creating a basic sort of BIOS screen type thing should be quite easy. All I did was I looked at it booting up and then I tried to replicate the text using printf. So at the beginning, we've got to include a load of random C header stuff because we need to. The next thing we need to do, it's insanely windy outside if you've not noticed, please ignore the wind. If you can't hear it, you're doing better than me. So once we've included all this random C header nonsense, we have a main function. And it's just basic printf, you know, like print all the text that I've seen on the BIOS with the right spacing to make it look authentic. Doing a memory test required a little bit of mild thinking, you know. I want to simulate it counting up the memory. I worked out that it counts it four times and it prints out how much RAM it's discovered each time. So there's two nested for loops like this kind of thing. This screen set cursor, that just lets you position the cursor on the screen very accurately instead of having to use printf and lots of spaces. And then a couple of delays to make it look realistic. So if we run that, and this will take ages, so, you know, let's skip this bit. You can see things are happening on the screen. It's a little bit of a mess. Um, yeah, so this is where we need to start talking to the BIOS. This is kind of the stuff that I didn't even know I needed to know until I discovered that I didn't know it, you know. Like, I need to clear the screen. Clearing the screen is kind of a side effect from changing the screen resolution. So this piece of code here, what it's trying to do is set the screen resolution to 80 by 25 text mode, the same thing that we're currently in. But the side effect of doing that is that it will wipe the screen clear. This is doing quite a lot of interesting things behind the scenes. This is some of that new low level stuff that I wanted to figure out. So the code you've just been looking at does what's called a software interrupt. And inside a PC, there's an area of memory for what's called an interrupt vector table. It's just a big list of function calls that we can call, and we want interrupt 10 hex. So the problem we've got is that our code written by DJGPP is running in what's called protected mode. DOS and the BIOS and all the code that we're trying to call with our interrupt, just to set the screen and clear it, is done in real mode. There's further complications because DOS is 16-bit and DJGPP programs that we're writing are 32-bit. Behind the scenes, when we call that interrupt function, What's happening is that it's actually switching back to real mode, calling the interrupt for us, and then getting the answer and going back into protective mode. The end result is that we need these small lines of code here, where we have to create some sort of structure that represents the registers. And then we need to set AH to zero and AL to three, and then call interrupt 10, and that will reset the screen for us. So this fantastic resource is known as Ralph Brown's interrupt list, and it contains pretty much every single interrupt to do with PCs from this period of time that we're talking about. Here is interrupt 10H. So we set AH to zero. We then need to set AL to the desired video mode. 
So we're doing 80 by 25 VGA. So it does 80 by 25, 9 by 16 fonts. Really it's 720 by 400 VGA mode. The end result of this is if I run the code. So here we go, it's running. And this kind of looks like a BIOS screen now. You can see the text is on the screen in the appropriate place. The sort of appropriate types of words have appeared. And it did a little memory test, or at least it simulated one. It says press Delta and to set up. I've made it pause just so I can see it. And if I press enter, it'll quit. But if we run it again, you can see it's counting up the RAM and it looks kind of realistic. There is one part of the screen that I've been ignoring. And on a mid nineties PC, it was quite hard to ignore it. Staring at us from the upper right in green is this funny little logo. Like what even is Energy Star? We're not doing a history lesson. They're an energy efficiency program administered by the US government. If you make a device that meets their specifications, you can put an Energy Star logo on it. Showing the world your motherboard saved energy was a marketing tool in the 90s. But as far as we care, it's a picture in text mode. Let's figure this bit out, because this bit is weird. The early PCs had a ROM chip in them, which contained all the character shapes. And all the video hardware did was look up a character and stamp it on the screen. And yet, here we are, looking at what appears to be an image. Where did it come from? How does it appear on the screen? You see, as best as I can figure out, the logo is not actually a picture. It's a block of user-defined graphics for the extended ASCII character set. Because the ASCII table has 256 characters available. The whole first 128 are the usual text characters that we need. The 128 after that are pretty random. There's all those little box drawing characters, little smiley faces and weird stuff that nobody ever uses. And somehow, if you're smart, you can change them and draw pictures with them. It's pretty similar to how 8-bit machines such as the BBC Micro did use the defined graphics. The problem with programming though, is that it's very easy to sort of hand wave and say why something works. But being able to explain how it works is different. I know why the image appears, it's just user defined graphics. But I don't know how to do that or even where the image comes from in the first place. Well, before all that happens, we need an image. And more than three seconds of thought should make you realize the image must be somewhere in a 90s PC. Clearly it's not on its hard drive because all this appears before the machine has even tried to boot off any form of storage. So it must be in the BIOS itself somewhere. And that means if we can get hold of a BIOS file, we can extract it. And it should be in a format precisely designed to be put onto the screen because this is a mid 90s PC. It's barely capable of doing anything when you first turn it on. But how do we get the image out of a BIOS? Well, what's even inside a BIOS chip anyway? I always figured it was just code, like the ROMs on an 8-bit machine. You know, the CPU woke up, the BIOS was mapped to an appropriate part of the address space, and away things went and they just sort of started up. They're not though. Did you know the BIOS contents in early PCs was actually an archive with different files inside it? You see, I found this tool that lets us unpack the data from PC's BIOS chip. And there's all sorts of things inside the chip. It's like a mini file system. It also explains why a PC becomes unusable if the BIOS becomes corrupt. It's got like the CPU microcode in it. It's got lookup tables of data that's needed to look at hardware and set up all that stuff that PCs do. With these tools, I can take the EPA logo and use it for myself. So let's go work out how we do that. From this explanation of the EPA logo format, I can tell the image is a certain amount of characters width and height. And that just so happens to conveniently fit into the second half of the ASCII table. So to draw this logo, we just need to load those bytes into the video card and overwrite the second half of the ASCII table and just remember which characters that we've used. If we then print those on the screen, just using good old printf, the logo will just appear. So let's see if any of that makes sense and see if we can actually make it work. So one of the really good things about working with C is that it's designed to be a portable programming language. So some of the code I wrote for my Aegon Lite, where I read in images and data and stuff, I can reuse it here. So what I've done is I've looked at the structure of an EPA file and I've created a, a nice little structure to store the data in. And then I've got this function to load it in. And all it does is uses fopen and fread and a bit of malloc. And it's just reading chunks of data into this structure. And that's read it into the machine. But now I've got it in my PC, 
the next step is to somehow get that into the video card and tell the card to use it as characters, like it's no good just having it randomly stored. When I run the program, I need it to draw it in the top corner somehow. So to actually make use of the EPA logo, the first thing we need to do is load in the data that we got out of the BIOS, which is that function I showed earlier. Then we need to do some quite clever trickery to get this into the video card. Because this code is running in 32-bit mode, but DOS and everything else runs in 16-bit mode, we need a little bit of trickery. The first thing is we have to copy the data into conventional memory in DOS. There's this function that DJGPP provides, which is called DOS Memput. So DOS Memput is a function that is just part of DJGPP. It's nothing to do with that ANSI C or anything else. And all it does is transfers data from the virtual address space into conventional memory, doing some clever trickery that's set up by the DOS protected mode thing that runs in the background. Once we've done that, we need to call another interrupt that will load in that data. They call it a user specified pattern. And we do that using the same method as before, using this DPMI interrupt, which is interrupt 10 again, but a different version of it. Okay, so you can see that we're using uh, mode 1100. So ESBP, which is this bit here, is the address of this in memory. And there's some clever math to work it out. Then we have the count of how many items that we're storing, so the number of characters, which is the width times the height. Then DX is how far into the ASCII table we want to go, so we want to go 128 characters into it. BL I don't understand, I put it to zero and it seems to work. And BH is the number of bytes. So once we've called this function, what it's done is loaded the data into the video card and overwritten part of the ASCII table. So now the next piece of code is just to print it on the screen. And this is how this code works. First, we call another interrupt 10, just to set the screen mode and reset it and clear the screen. We load in the font. We can position the cursor where we want it to be, so the first row. We're going to print out some of the text. We're leaving a little gap here, because this is where another tiny logo sits. Then we're going to go to the far right of the screen and we're going to print out the first row of the BIOS logo. We're then going to do the next line with the next row of the BIOS logo. And then there's a line that has no text but another part of the logo. And we're just carrying on doing that. So it's usually a line of text and the BIOS logo at the side of it. We then have this bit which is two for loops. And this simulates counting the memory and printing this bit at the bottom of the screen. And there's a bit of a delay as if it is counting the memory so you can see it happening. And then I just wait a bit longer and print the final line of code at the bottom, and that's it. So as it's running, you can kind of see that there's something wrong with the logo. It looks right, but there's weird blocks all over it, and it's black and white. So we now need to make it colourful. So this is the final code. So some of it is the same as before. We've got the same struct to store the EPA file, but then I've put all the text into just strings, so I can print it out a bit better. We still load the EPA logo like before, but now there's a new function called VGA put char. To print color, you need the text to print and then you need the attributes. It's a little bit like a ZX Spectrum where it can have a pen and a paper color and you've got an eight by eight block that you can draw into. So that's what this does. It just treats the actual line that's going to the video card as like a string that's twice as long as the screen because it's a character followed by its attributes. I then have a function just to print out one line of text and it sets up the correct colors. So here's the code from before to set the font. But then there's an extra bit for the little award logo that's in the top left of the screen. So the main program, it just clears the screen. I'm trying to fix a bug here, but I can't quite make it work. I'll show you that in a minute. We then set the font. This bit is to print out the little award logo in the top left corner. We then print out each line of like the BIOS text, and then we simulate the memory being counted. So if I run this, you can now see it looks quite convincing. So it looks and it acts kind of like it should do. But there's a little bit of a weird problem, and I don't quite know how to fix it. Now, if we compare this side by side with a real BIOS, you'll notice a few subtle differences. Right, so this one is my code. This one is a real emulated PC. So as real emulated PCs can go. 
if we look at them, there's, there's some differences visually. Like, the screen aspect ratio is wrong. If you look at the font, it's slightly different. This one, it's got an O with a dot in the middle. These ones, if I can find an O in it anywhere, it's got a slash going through it. See these vertical black lines through the logo? They're not there. So I think what's happening is this is a different screen resolution. This is in EGA, which I think the original PC was in, and this is VGA, and they're slightly different. So if you know how to fix that, can you tell me? Because I don't understand why that does it. Oh, by the way, this is what it really looks like if you don't have the ASCII code loaded in for the image. So there we go. This is pretty satisfying. Not because I know how to use printf, but because I had to do a lot of research. I learned some interesting things about the PC's BIOS. I discovered a fairly important skill of how to call BIOS routines in C. And I learned it whilst doing it. I like that kind of learning where I need to do something and I have to learn how to do it to solve a problem. I'm no good at learning a bunch of theory in advance and then working out how to apply it. I had no idea how to do any of this before starting this project. And it wasn't really that difficult. It wasn't easy, but all the information was out there for me to just discover and understand. So with my recent Aegon and DOS videos, there's been a lot of really useful comments. But as I'm discovering, the YouTube comment system is not that great for actual meaningful interaction. It's nice seeing you write in comments, and I do read them, and I'll reply to them. I'll give you a little heart thing to say I've at least seen it. But I want a bit more, which brings me on to something I've been considering for a while. I want a better way to interact with everyone beyond the comments section on videos. Uh, my website is a bit of a mess. And I'm planning on redoing it. And I feel like a forum might be a good thing to set up. Maybe. I know Discord is everyone's favourite place to hang out. But it's not great for storing information. It just gets lost amongst the comments. And I don't know about you, but I'm on quite a few already. And I forget to check in with them regularly. So, the forum? Is that a thing? I don't know. Leave a comment. What do you think? If there was a forum or something, would you bother going there? Or would it just be a dead place that three people visit? Do I even care? I might start one anyway. Give me your thoughts. But now I've got a basic DOS environment working, and I'm pretty happy with compiling code. I think the next thing to try is some VGA programming. I used to watch a lot of demos as a kid, and everyone likes looking at pretty images being drawn. And there's loads of obsolete, long forgotten graphics techniques that people documented back in the day. I've got these kind of books, and dodgy PDFs of these books. Like Seriously, someone scanned that book and turned it into a PDF. What were you doing? But it's great, thank you. So I want to read all these things, and all those demo programming text files that exist on the internet. Try and recreate some cheesy 90s demo information. This thing has stopped working. Play. So if you know the names of any good demo program resources that explain techniques like plasma swirly stuff, I don't know, drawing fractals that doesn't require degree in maths, um, scrolling text, all that kind of stuff, let me know in the comments. And until then, I'll see you later.